Hi there, I'm Vitanis, and I'll show how to test the Amazon Scraper in the Scraper APIs Playground. You'll learn about the different Amazon sources and what you can do with them, and I'll showcase step by step how to use the Amazon product source. Let's begin. Once you land on the Playground site, you can find various Amazon sources on the left side menu. The URL source allows you to provide an Amazon URL leading directly to the page you want to scrape. This can be a link to the search results page, a product page, a category page, or similar Amazon page types. With the user agent setting, you can choose the device and browser type for scraping. Options include desktop, mobile, and tablet devices running the most popular operating systems and browsers. You can also set the JavaScript uh, rendering parameter to run requests through a headless browser and access dynamic Amazon content. If you want to structurize data from a raw HTML document, then use the parsing parameter for automatic parsing. Alternatively, you can add your own parsing instructions instead of using our pre-built parsing logic. Under the localization, you can set the location for the product delivery destination and the locale parameter to specify the uh, web interface language. These settings ensure you get accurate data that's tailored to a specific geographic region and language. Next in line is the product source, which scripts all the details from a product page, including ads, specifications, related products, and other product data. Here you have to provide the product's asset number you want to scrape. Now, the Amazon domain uh, parameter allows you to configure a website's domain, such as .com, .co.uk, and etc. The auto-select variant helps in situations where you want to get either accurate pricing data or an accurate representation of the parent assets product page. Now, the search source takes any keyword you provide, for example, Apple laptop, and returns Amazon's search results for that query. You can also set the result limits, such as the page you want to start scraping from and the total number of pages you want to get results from. Additionally, you can filter the results by category ID and seller ID to retrieve specific data you are interested in. The pricing source allows you to scrape just the pricing details from a product page. Here you need to provide the product asset number. The seller source lets you scrape all the details from a seller page. Here in the seller ID field, you need to enter a 13 character seller identification number. Now, with the best seller source, you can scrape all the best selling products from a category page. For this, you need to provide the node ID, also known as the category ID. To scrape Amazon reviews and ratings, you can utilize the review source. Just like with other sources, you can use various parameters to customize the scraper for your needs. Last but not least, if you want to extract customer questions and answers for a product, then use the questions and answers source. Here you can simply provide the product's asset number as a query. Now that you are familiar with Amazon sources, let's take the Amazon product scraper for a spin. I have this product page open in my browser, so I'll copy the asset number directly from the URL like this. Now let's paste it into the query field like this. If you want to retrieve the raw HTML document of this page, simply run the scraper as is without setting additional parameters. And here, you can see the entire HTML data. Now, the user agent parameter can help to further anonymize your scraping requests or view a page as it would appear on a particular device. For instance, if you're aiming to scrape content designed for mobile devices, you can choose the mobile user agent. Once you run the request, you can see that the Amazon page has changed to a mobile-friendly layout. The JavaScript rendering parameter is a simple on and off switch. It comes in handy when the raw HTML you've scraped looks different from what you see in a web browser. 
However, for our current needs, this parameter isn't necessary because all the data is available without additional rendering. Of course, retrieving the HTML document is only the first half of the scraping process. The next step is to parse the data. Hence, our Amazon scraper gives you the ability to automatically extract data from HTML documents. Let's toggle the parsing parameter and run the request to see the difference. Here you can see nicely structured product data. In case you want to get results localized for a specific geographic region, then you can do that in two ways. Firstly, to simulate a user living, for example, in France and accessing Amazon's French domain, you can set the domain parameter to FR and geolocation to a French postal code, for example, 75007. Make sure to use an ASIN number for a product sold on Amazon's French domain. Otherwise, you may access an error page saying there is no such product. Let's run the scraper. As you can see, the scraped data is in French. The pricing is set to euros and uh, the uh, URLs use a French domain. Secondly, to simulate a user living, for example, in France, but accessing Amazon's United States domain, you can set the domain to .com and the location to .fr. Again, here you have to use an ASIN number for a product sold on Amazon's United States domain, and then you can run the request. You can see the data is in English, has pricing set to dollars, the URLs have the .com domain, but the delivered to destination is set to France. In a nutshell, these two methods allow you to get accurate pricing and delivery information and simulate specific browsing scenarios. That's all for this tutorial. Take the time to play around with different Amazon sources and their parameters for your project needs. Additionally, check out our documentation which is packed with everything you need to know for a smooth journey with Oxlabs products. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.